Connecticut Democratic Senator Richard Blumenthal serves on the Judiciary Committee, has read the report preliminarily and joins me now. I know you're going to take more time later, but Senator, what are your initial impressions? I've seen the report. I want to reread parts of it, but my very emphatic impression is that this set of interviews is at best, most charitably, woefully incomplete. To put it bluntly, it smacks of a whitewash, even a cover-up. There are so many relevant witnesses who have not been contacted, let alone interviewed. Of the 25 witnesses that I told the FBI and the White House were necessary, and my colleagues on the Judiciary Committee on the Democratic side joined me in this letter, only a fraction have been contacted. They have not interviewed, again, Dr. Blasey Ford or Judge Kavanaugh, among others, but even many of the eyewitnesses who potentially saw what happened to Deborah Ramirez have never been contacted. What do you say to those who, who say, well, uh, Dr. Ford and Judge Kavanaugh had hours and hours of testimony, so uh, there's no point in, in re-interviewing them? Dr. Blasey Ford wanted to be interviewed again so that presumably she could respond to some of the claims that Judge Kavanaugh made after she testified, but put them aside. The idea that a survivor of sexual assault, Deborah Ramirez, told the FBI in her interview about what happened to her, and we know that from what she said publicly, and then none of the potential eyewitnesses or corroborating witnesses who would substantiate her story, at least some of them, were never contacted. It strikes me as really a neglect of the FBI's duty. But the FBI is not responsible. I think that the blame lies with the White House that straightjacketed this investigation. Uh, I am inferring from what several of your colleagues have already said and what we know of the people who were interviewed and who were not interviewed, more importantly, that they did not look into whole issues as to whether or not he charitably, to put it charitably, misspoke in some of those follow-up questions last Thursday about his drinking, about the definitions in the yearbook, uh, about what happened when he was in high school and in college, and his social relationships. We're limited as to what we can say. We are barred from talking about the content of the interviews, although the chairman of the committee has said that there is no hint of misconduct. In my view, that is wrong based on what I have seen. But we are limited as to what we can say to well, answer Senator your question. Well, Senator has already said that he saw hints of misconduct. There are certainly indications of misconduct that should have been pursued. No question, Andrea, that this report is blatantly and clearly incomplete in pursuing some of the very credible allegations that have been made. It really is the story of unfollowed leads, unanswered questions, and uninterviewed witnesses. And it raises more questions than it answers. If this does proceed with confirmation, do you feel that the judge who sat in front of you and said what goes around comes around, referring to what he described as left-wing conspiracies to try to derail his confirmation, when he said what goes around comes around, do you think he can be impartial and judicious sitting on that bench? That is really a key question, and for me it is the key question, temperament. Temperament and trustworthiness. Temperament, or the lack of it, indicated by his coming before our committee, threatening and, in effect, trying to bully us with rage and acrimony, arrogance, and the kind of demeanor that he exhibited, but most important, blaming it on a partisan motive when these survivors of sexual assault came forward on their own initiative it belittles and demeans them and the entire survivor community, but the temperament or lack of it that he exhibited are a key point here. And of course, uh, just to be absolutely clear, I said that I was a no on this nominee because of his extreme, out of the mainstream, ideological views on issues like health care, where he would 
deprive millions of Americans of protections against pre-existing conditions or the imperial presidency and exaggerated view of presidential power, the constraints that he would propose on a woman's right to decide when she wants to have children or a person's right to decide whom he or she wants to marry. Those substantive positions are the reason for my initially opposing the nomination, but temperament, clearly an issue here. And what about Senator McConnell saying today that of course he was passionate, of course he was angry, because if you were unfairly accused and you were defending your reputation and your family, you would be angry and passionate. Andrea, I've spent just about my whole career as a litigator in federal and state courts. I've argued four cases before the United States Supreme Court. In fact, I clerked for Supreme Court justice. And I know judges are sometimes angry, but the issue of temperament goes to self-discipline and self-control and a sense of impartiality and objectivity. Judges are supposed to maintain that sense of fundamental fairness. And this report only deepened my doubts about temperament and trustworthiness. And his demeanor when he came before us certainly created a very serious doubt among many of my colleagues on both sides of the aisle. And what do you say to Senator Collins, who said today that after reading the report that she thought it was very thorough? I'd love to talk to Senator Collins. I haven't had an opportunity to do so yet, but what I would say is, here are the witnesses who should have been interviewed. Let's perhaps take another pause and ask the FBI to go back and do it right. And again, I want to emphasize, the FBI, I am quite certain, wanted to do it right. It was the White House that imposed the straitjacket. Senator Blumenthal, thanks on a very busy day. I appreciate your taking the time. Thanks very much. Thank you.